guys, <laughs> guys, guys, nothing insane, like not one thing insane has happened, but the amount, there's so much to talk about. Like just that alone deserves a guys, guys, guys. So first let's just jump right into the drama because I know that's what you guys are here for. I know I'm a figure skating drama channel and I embrace it, all right? Basically, let's start with the main event, at least in my eyes, is the Sambo 70 50th year anniversary Jubilee extravaganza. And by extravaganza, I mean Evgenia Medvedeva's dress because yes, Evgenia Medvedeva in that dress is the only reason why we all stayed, let's be honest. But the main drama, to come out of that is that Renat Lashev, the principal of the Sambo 70 school, which is where all the Eteri girls are at, where the Krustoni rink, where Eteri Dudberita trains, is at, who we should honestly never take seriously when he speaks, but yet we still always ask a quote of him. Anyways, he said that this event was going to be hosted by both Medvedeva and Sagitova. They were supposed to host the event together. He said this before. And then, of course, when it happens and we only see Medvedeva and some dude hosting while Alina is sitting on the front row, <laughs> looking like she'd rather be anywhere else, which, to be fair, the rest of the audience also looked like they were bored out of their minds. Even Renat, like Lechev, the principal, some points just looked like he wanted to be anywhere else but there. People were confused because he said that they were gonna host together and then Medvedeva was the only one in a beautiful red flowing gown. And of course, he gives another interview trying to explain why Alina was in the front row and Medvedeva was hosting alone. And as you can expect, just like his justification for the absence of Alina in the last Sambo 70 event, which happened in 2020, where Alina was not invited to raise the flag, he, of course, says things in the worst way possible. He says, Zagitova did not host because they decided that there should be a man and a woman. And Medvedeva's diction is just better than Zagitova's. She is a Moscow girl. Everyone was very pleased. The concert itself or the event itself was dynamic. Few people can be lucky enough to bring so many people into the Kremlin, blah, 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 blah. Point is that he said that the reason why Alina Zagitova was not hosting and they chose Medvedeva over her, because that's what he's saying, is that Medvedeva has better diction because she's from Moscow. <laughs> Which is like, what is, I don't understand. And then Alina clapped back on Instagram, just like she did a year ago, like anyone else getting deja vu. She posted a video of her quote unquote, practicing her Moscow accent, which chef's kiss, props to you, Alina, because that is hilarious and to the point. And honestly, what is wrong with that man? <laughs> He's a grown man. I feel like he honestly enjoys fueling fandom wars. Like this is an age old fandom war and he always is the one to reignite it. And then Lashev gives another interview because he can't stay quiet and he doubles down on his position just like he did a year ago in the worst way possible. This man does not know when to stop. He says, to be honest, I have not seen the video of Sagitova where she's working on her Moscow speech. I didn't see it. I don't know if she was offended or not. Why is he so petty? He says, understand that I do not wish evil. I want her to develop because Alina will only get better from this as a teacher, as an educator. I can talk about this. We will definitely discuss this situation with her. No, why? Not everything is as scary as everyone thinks. My words about diction, Medvedeva just has it better. That's all. <laughs> What is wrong with it? I don't see any problems. The fact that Alina's fans think that I like Medvedeva more and underestimate Sagitova is nonsense. There is no such thing that someone is better for me. And think for yourself, like I'm Tartar, Alina's Tartar, and now what? I should favor more with the Tartars? Nonsense. Let's not forget that Sambo 70 gave, oh God, Sagitova a start in life. Without the help of the school, she would hardly have trained and felt well. We are trying for her. So not only did he double down, not only did he bring up the fact that the fans are always shitting on him and therefore shitting on each other's opposite fandom, Sagitova to Medvedeva fans, Medvedeva fans to Sagitova fans, so even more fuel in the fans of the fandom. And then on top of that, he says that Sagitova is only famous because of me. Like literally that's basically what he said. Like what is wrong with you? He didn't say that, but he that's what he meant when he said, let's not forget the Sambo 70 gave Sagitova a start in life. What the hell, what is wrong with you? He ends it by saying, my words are directed solely to make Alina better. And so once again, <laughs> Medvedeva fans and Alina fans are at each other's throats for the same freaking arguments they've always been arguing about. Medvedeva is the favorite, Alina is not allowed to enjoy her Olympic champion medal, uh, they always overlook her, blah 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 blah. I'm not gonna say anything about anything because these arguments are never gonna stop, so I'm just 
whatever. And also a reporter asked the chef if he didn't think the event was a bit too patriotic, which I mean, I wasn't gonna say it, but we were all thinking it. Back to the actual event. Genia running on stage felt so magical to me. Like it was like a princess in a fairy tale running through the fields, felt very rain for some reason. And even if that moment only came because she and Sagibitoa looked at each other and were like, yeah, let's not stand next to each other. <laughs> And that's the whole reason why she ran across the stage because they gave eyes to each other be like do not stand next to me she's like i will not stand next to you um even so it came from that it's still my favorite moment peak moment of the entire thing the most memorable moment of the entire thing by far i loved every second of it yeah and that's basically the 50th anniversary drama mess which is the exact same thing that happened in 2020 with that horrible raising of the flag situation when Le Chef said something, Alina clapped back, the Instagram comments, and then he doubled down with the worst way possible. And now we're back to this where we do everything again and again and again. When is this gonna stop? Who knows? Oh my God. And to top it all off, if you thought that you were getting tired of fandom wars between Medvedeva fans and Sagitova fans, well, babes, get ready because it is gonna happen on weekly basis i assure you because it was announced that not only is sagitava gonna host ice age but medvedeva is gonna be one of the participants with a hockey player i think called danya milokin milokin i don't know how you say that correctly please correct me in the comment so correction it's not a hockey player it's a tiktoker slash musician slash influencer who was part of like the Team 10 house of Russia called Team House or Dream House or something like that. And people, when they looked at the boy, were like, can he even pick her up? Which is both an insult to Zhenya and to him. Like, are you not strong enough and you're too big or whatever? And so Zhenya posted a clap bag on her Instagram. Instagram is just for clap bags at this point of them, like, of him carrying her and also edited to like a cringy TikTok slow motion situation. So this is gonna be interesting to see. Not only am I looking forward to Alina and Zhenya's dynamic, but their dynamic and if he can actually perform on the ice. So yeah, that was a little correction I wanted to make. <laughs> and it's hilarious because he's already given quotes about how he is very scared about dropping Medvedeva, which I thought it was gonna be the opposite. I thought she was gonna be with a performance professional figure skater and she was gonna be like the guest but I I somehow forgot <laughs> then my baby is a professional skater and so she's gonna be paired with somebody who's not a professional skater but does that mean that he's gonna be carrying her because she's a single skater and we know we like played pretend that she's a part pairs girl but she is not she only has a summer camp experience of it if you will a gala show performance of it which by the way can we talk about Medvedeva about doing alegria was that not the best thing in the world oh yeah i forgot to mention that the day after the 50th anniversary jubilee of sample 70 we had the lovers on ice which i don't know why it was named like that i don't even know what was the occasion but we had javier fernandez our baby is back with my baby they took a picture together it was amazing he also took a picture with alina i think he might have taken pictures with everybody there but yeah that was great and she did alegria and the costume for alegria at first when i first saw it i didn't like it it looks like the painting of frida Kahlo where she has like the pole going up her like spine that's like the one aspect that i didn't like a lot of people had trouble with the two two i wasn't really mad about the two to it's that blue line that goes all the way down but when i when ladies and gentlemen when i heard the opening like circus music start or whatever it is for alegria i lost when i saw her come out for the second time because she did members of a geisha and i was like okay fine and then she came out for the second time and she had this new costume that i would never seen i was like what is she doing is she doing like a weird like sailor moon is this like a sailor moon episode i've never seen and then the alegria music started playing i almost lost my freaking mind i'm not gonna lie to you i might have yelped like a dog i might have clapped like a seal i might have jumped up and down with joy when she did the cartwheel that rhymed i lost my shit <laughs> and now we're gonna be getting just every single week from medvedeva on the ice with this man who if he drops her i'm not gonna lie it's gonna be rough on this dude <laughs> if he drops her the whole internet is gonna 
kill him. Oh my god, it's gonna be amazing. And the Seguito by hosting, I know for a fact something's gonna happen. They're gonna have to stand together. Oh my god, guys, Seguito and Mimirva are gonna have to stand next to each other. Like, <laughs> Alina's gonna have to interview Mimirva. Like, they're just gonna have to. And people are gonna lose their damn minds. Something is gonna be said. Some side eye is gonna be given. Like, I know something's gonna happen. And I cannot motherfucking wait, if I'm being completely honest with you. I need them to get over them not being able to be in the same room because now they're gonna be working together every week. But I also also like the tension that is there when they're next to each other it makes things interesting it makes things fun that is why i'm here that is why you're here i am the drama channel figure skating god damn it xoxo gossip girl <laughs> i don't even know what i'm saying anymore next topic remember in my last video where i praised plushenko for being a better coach or at least having a better plan of attack with the junior ladies well that lasted three seconds because in the most plushenko of ways he's making me want to take all of that back <laughs> I, I give you one compliment and you ruin it not i'm ugh. So basically, first, Plushenko posts a picture of his poor son who broke his arm playing football, soccer, shown skating and practicing with his broken arm. And there is no doubt in my mind that he was also made to practice jumps while in the cast, which is dumb and dangerous. And also, like, why? Like, it's not like your son is competing for the Olympics. He doesn't have to be on the ice. Just let him rest until his arm is at least not in a cast. I am disappointed and yet not surprised. Then, same situation, different skater, because then Veronica Jelena, it was reported a while ago that she withdrew from the Junior Grand Prix event because of a serious injury. And it was rumored that she even had a broken leg and she was gonna have to be on bed rest. And Mr. Can't Handle My Reputation being questioned, Plushenko couldn't handle people questioning his coaching skills. And so he posted a video of Veronica Jelena training with a single skate on and a trainer on the other one like a shoe on the other one so she's literally on the ice just on one foot while plushenko pulls her <laughs> with like a wooden stick what i maybe this is like a common thing in figure skating educate me i'm still a baby figure skating fan but this does not look i don't feel like this is good i don't feel like this looks legit like what she, he posted a, this long caption about how those vicious rumors of her having to be on bed rest with a broken leg are detrimental to her mental health. And I'm just like, there is some sort of disconnect here, sir. If you're really worried about her mental health, can you also worry about her physical health? Like, does she really have to be on the ice right now next to your son who has a broken arm? <laughs> like, what? What is happening? Can nobody stay in bed for like three days? At least till she can put the second boot on. Like you say she, her leg is not broken, but she can't even put the boot on. Anyways, I should I read this entire long caption? Let's read it. He says, news of the day, which I'm guessing is ironic. The entire internet has been dazzling since yesterday. Literally, source, Veronica Gillina broke her leg. What a source the media does not indicate. Another stuffing of journalists for the sake of beautiful headlines and sensation. And these stuffing is read by fans and amateurs of figure skating and adequate journalists who sometimes think that the profession of journalist is still a profession and at least an investigation and clarification of data there are of course gossip not professionals but even they must understand that they are lying about the health of a child who recently turned 13. we are waiting for permission from the doctors when she will be able to fully start skating nika is very strong girl i am more than sure i don't know what to say feels a bit some cognitive dissonance is going on because what you're saying Saying is not matching what you're doing. Literally, the posts are right below each other. <laughs> your son in a cast, and then your star skater in a single skate because her other foot is so injured that she can't even put the second boot on. Essentially, Plushenko. Remind me to never give you a compliment again. Next. Nebelhorn Trophy. All I have to say is, can we get Vincent Joe just as much hype as Nathan Chen? Because he truly is an insanely talented athlete. Like, the amount of quads that he's doing is insane. And then on top of that, he's a really beautiful skater. I love his short program. I love, love, love his short program. And then Alyssa Liu. You're doing great, sweetie. I am honestly shocked with the consistency that she has currently right now. And she's looking amazing for the Olympics. Like she is looking really consistent, really strong. And that's exactly what we need from you, girl. So yeah, if you can't tell, Vincent so won for the men's and Lisa Liu won for the ladies. Basically, for me at least, securing them, at least for Alyssa, a spot for the Olympics. And Vincent, 
I would also count on him being there. Then in the Junior Grand Prix, the Atari girls are dominating, shocking nobody. And my favorite of the Russian junior ladies is Petrosian, who just won the Slovenia event. And also everybody go follow the skating times on Twitter or skating times on Twitter because they truly help me keep track of all these events and they always post consistently out on time. And finally, the last piece of drama you guys are here for. The mysterious, spooky episode of the Costa Chronicles Instagram edition. Dun dun. <laughs> Basically, over the last week, everybody noticed that Aliona's tags for a Terry, her coach, had suddenly disappeared, which means one thing, blocked. So everyone and their freaking mother is trying to confirm whether a Terry is even blocked in the first place, and why did Costornaya block Terry on Instagram. And that's when everybody also notices that Elona is no longer following a Terry, which confirms that she is indeed blocked. Then, Aliona refollowed a Terry, and all of her tags came back, which means unblocked. But a Terry still does not follow Aliona, meaning she unfollowed her when just a few weeks ago, she had finally refollowed Aliona and Trusova, who were the two who had left to go to Plushenko. Which honestly, now that I think about it, I don't know when you block somebody if that automatically makes them unfollow you or if a Terry manually went and unfollowed Aliona. I'm not familiar with the ways. I don't really block that many people on Instagram. But yeah, so now Aliona is the only girl out of 3A that is not followed by Tutberitze, putting her on the same category as Daria and Maya. So now Daria, Maya, and Aliona are the only three girls of Tutberitze out of her six girls who are competing for a spot in the Olympics who are not followed by their coach, Eteri Tutberitze. What does any of this mean? I do not freaking know. Your guess is as good as mine. However, given that even Gleikenhaus gave jabs at Aliona, saying that if you don't like Aliona skating, sometimes the problem might be the attitude of the skater. This all combined with this mysterious blocking and unblocking of Eteri means to me, I suspect that Team Tutberitze and Aliona are right now on rocky terms with each other, which is not a good place to be before the Olympics, right before the Olympics, especially considering that your coaching team is also putting all their efforts into your teammates who happen to be your biggest competitors. The amount of dedication that they're putting into Sasha specifically and Camila Valiev of course should scare everybody in the camp, especially Aliona who as we know will not hold back on what she thinks and what she feels and the coaching staff does have the power if they don't want to invest that much time in you and you don't even want to be on amicable terms with them. You came back to the lion's den, Aliona. You chose to leave, shocking them, because they didn't expect you to leave, to Plushenko. Then you had that whole mess with Sergei and all that stuff. At this point, if you really want to get to the Olympics and you decided to come back to Tutberitze, I feel like the only way to go is to put all your differences aside and work together, even though you might hate it, because this might be, not even might, this is your only shot to get to the Olympics. And it is honestly your best shot to go to the Olympics because Team Tutberitze can get you there. I mean, just look at what Sasha is doing right now. She went from a possible candidate to the most possible candidate after test gates when Balieva fumbled and threw so a sword. So all it takes is one really good performance to change everybody's opinions about you, the fans, the judges, the competitors, and you will definitely be in the race to be one of the contenders that gets to go to the Olympics. But how things are looking right now, I thought I was gonna be the most concerned for Sherbakova, but now I'm really concerned for Aliona. And I know we all want her there, but the thing, the way that things are, are developing right now, it's making me feel the most skeptical about her, which I hate saying. I hate saying the fact that Aliona, hey, play nice because I honestly am feeling like you're not gonna even get there by the way that things are developing. And we, I don't even know the entire story behind the scenes. I wish I knew, but from what we can see, it doesn't look good. So, Costa bots, time to panic? I don't know. <laughs> don't get into Costa depression as of yet, but it's not looking good. And yeah, that was all the drama. So much happened. Why? How? For who? Like, I don't know what is in the water. Oh, wait, I do know. Is that everybody, it's a little bit more crazy when it's an Olympic season. And this Olympic season, to me, is the craziest of them all just by sheer volume of contenders. Oh, 
and also I should mention that Elisabetta Tuktemishava won the event that Sasha pulled out from, the first stage of the Russian Cup, right? Point is, she got a first place, and I'm happy for her. So, Terry Girl is not just all about you. <laughs> there's, there's always a girl who wants it more, and that is scary as fuck, because it means that all these girls need to be in high gear all the freaking time and right now is crunch time but yeah let me know what you guys think of all of this because i've talked about it a lot i feel like i talked even too fast when talking about all of this but i just needed to get it out and as always shout out to timothy leslie natalia and scotty and if you want to support me my merch store and my patreon are down below and also my twitter and as always i will talk to you guys later Bye bye